Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to look at two of the most important parts of a website because it's what people see when they first come to the website. Uh, the first part is the feature area. This is the area of the website that we have looked at before and would call the, um, the, the first half of the newspaper or above the fold. So if you were to look at a newspaper and fold it in half, you would see the top headline pages of the newspaper. And when you look at a screen on a computer, you can see that that kind of exists on the computer screen as well. That there is a, when the page first opens, there is something that you can see specifically on the page. Like we're at MarthaStewart.com and we can see uh, we got, she has her header with all of her menus and everything like that. But the thing that jumps out at you is her main article for the week, which is 21 of our best indoor Halloween decorations. And if you click on it, it's linkable and would open up into uh, a different page that would give you the information. And on this page, she has a slideshow. So this is another way of getting at a lot of information pretty quickly is including this kind of slideshow into your feature area. Notice there's no scrolling up or down. I can see the information right away. Uh, there's also notice over here uh, an ad for you know whatever is going on in the region. This is how you know she makes her money by through this website is is collecting ad revenue and um, linking you towards that paid product. Sometimes we call this the um, the call to action, so to speak, for the user. What does the designer of the website really want you to do? And clearly, by having this video content here, pretty front and, front and center on the, the main feature area of the website. In fact, if you think about it, it's even higher than the actual content. You have the headline, and then you have the content, but then you have this video right here. So that's the call to action, what you want the user to actually dive in and do. So that's an, another thing to think about with your feature area is what do you want the user to do? That should be really clear from the perspective of the user. And on her front page, it's very clear that she wants you to click this link and see that first, which we did. So there's some other examples of websites that take uh, good use of you know, featured areas. Um, one of my favorites is Apple, and I'm going to have the tab open. I want to close it and reopen it because it ha it's pretty cool when it opens for the first time. Look at that. I mean, how could you not be intrigued by that graphic? Unleashed the Apple event today at 10 a.m. So, of course, I'm going to be tuning in at 10 a.m. this morning to see what is Apple doing today? You know, what are they announcing? Because we all know Apple makes these big announcements about new products and new things. And that's always very exciting, especially since they just released uh, some new products. So what could this possibly be going on right now that we have this additional release? And I have a feeling it's a new iOS, which is coming up. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, you can see the rest of the body, which is the other important part, right? You have the feature area, the thing that gets your attention when you first come to the site, the call to action, which clearly the call to action today is to go look at that Apple event. But it's not 10 o'clock yet, so I might want to scroll down and see what else is the call to action, what other kinds of things are here in the body, and you can see they're selling their products, right? We have our new Apple Watch, we have our new iPhone Pro, uh, they're talking about the Fitness Plus, then we have our iPad Minis and our Macs. You can see where their priorities are, and of course, they have this cute little movie down here at the bottom that you can watch, and then a credit card. So these are the kinds of things that they think are really important for the user to see right here on this feature page, the front page. Uh, we have our featured item and then the rest of the body. Let's take a look at next. Um, 4th Street Cookie, which is famouscookies.com. And again, you have the um, feature area, and they're using this idea of a scroll, 
right on the front page, and this is a very common thing to do now, where you have a couple kind of feature items, right, that just scroll from from the one side of the screen, and I could click these little arrows. But you don't want to obviously put too many things in here. I think they have just three, which it seems about right to me, just three things to click on. And you can see the, the most important things for them. And then, of course, they have their call to action button, right, the shop now. So this is the main feature item. And then we have the rest of the body, which tells us you know, the things that we should be looking at, cookies and custom shop and assortment shop and gifts. And then they have their best sellers ready for you to buy right there on that front page. And they have local delivery from Grubhub and Uber Eats. These are all the things in the body they want you to know about right away. So this front page is really, really critical about um, knowing what this website is all about. I mean, we have all these other things that we can click on as well if we want to dive into the website and explore more. But this is the front page where you're going to really re retain your user. If you don't bring them in here, if you can't grab them right here, they're not going to click on anything else. So th this being um, enticing and inviting and interesting is really critical in your design of your web page. So let's take a look at another one. This is from the Tennessee Department of Tourism, uh, TNVcation, TN Vacation, Tennessee Vacation, I guess. And you can see right now, they want you to know who's playing music. So that's the most important thing for them. This is gonna link right to their calendar. That is what they want you doing. They want you to come to Tennessee and plan your trip and come see some Tennessee music. Right now, that is what they believe is the feature in Tennessee and their call to action. But then they have some other things, right? We turn to giggles and heartbeats, into valuable travel advice for parents. That's important to them. So kids, they want you to know that this is a family place. This is where you should bring in your family. Um, and then they have you planning your trip right down here at the bottom, road trip ideas, some other things, um, other kinds of road trip ideas that you can follow all through Tennessee. So they're really, really asking you to come to Tennessee and listen to the music and bring your family. This is a place for you to bring your family and they're making it as easy as they possibly can to help you book that trip to Tennessee. So let's take a look at another one built by Buffalo. Um, so they're telling you right here, their kind of mission statement. This is their mission statement for their product. We build brands and beautiful websites for clients who need a little help to create something truly special. We do it with love in Brighton for all clients around the world and we can do it for you. So they're inviting you in um, to create a website with them. I'm not super impressed by this. Honestly, I think from a web design company, they probably could have gotten something a little bit better, a higher plane. It's a nice slogan, but I don't know what it is immediately when I come to the website. I think I'd want a little bit more. Uh, they clearly want to show you their different uh, portfolios. These are the companies that they've done, and you can click on all those. So that could be interesting. Uh, they give you some statistics. They tell you about happy clients. Here's another scroller, quotes, project planner, connect. This is the actual call to action. See, this is what, if I wanted to grab somebody's attention for this website, again, that call to action should be way up top. It should be one of the first things that people see. And here it's way down at the bottom. So I think this call to action is a missed opportunity. I think they should have put this way up here, a higher plan, and the call to action should have been right there for the user. I had to scroll all the way down to the bottom to get to that, and they may have lost me. I may have already started clicking on some of these other links, and I'm not clicking on their call to action, which would be to go ahead and launch the project planner. You know, this is where they want you to get started. And then they have this nice little newsletter, which is nice, but I think this is a missed opportunity here. Let's go on and take a look at another website. I think this is my last one. Okay, so here we go. 
Oh, this is an old newspaper. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea of where things were over time. It's a website publication. Uh, it's basically the news of what is in the news. Uh, it's nice that they kept it up for us. But you can kind of see in here, it, this really is what a newspaper looks like. You know, the, clearly they actually, in their banner here, they're giving you their kind of call to action and they seize publication. But before that, this is kind of what the page looked like, where you had your, your date and you had your, your header of what the company is. And we had all over links of our sections. And then we have our headlines, just like you find in any other newspaper. Uh, you might find something like this on CNN. CNN is another good example of this. I'll give you one that's actually up and working. We'll see what's on CNN this morning. And we can see, you know, again, the headlines, the most important stuff is listed right here that they want you to see. And which is an interesting topic by itself is that the news controls what you see as important because they put this right here in this feature area. So depending upon what website you go to, and I don't want to pick any particular one. We'll do the New York Times. I think that's right, NewYorkTimes.com. And you can see there, again, Colin Powell dying, um, again, is the top news for today. And then you can see some other things, and we'll go. And see that what that company is doing, again, this is the top news for right now, is that Colin Powell has died. So, you know, those are some good examples of um, uses of feature area and uses of the header and the body as information as you scroll down. And then once you dive deeper into the site, you have those, of course, those other sections and almost a, like a repeat on each page of a feature area of that page and then body of that page. So you have the front page and then everything that kind of comes from that at that point on. Make sure that you're paying attention to the, the text that you put on the screen. Uh, you want to think about line length. You know, how long should a line of text be? Do we really want text to be straight across from side to side? Um, so if you looked at some of those newspaper examples, let me go back to CNN this morning. And you can see this is pretty short from left to right. It, it's pretty quick and easy to read. All of their articles are like that. Uh, when you click on the article, you can see it's short left to right. It's about between 52 and 65 characters, which is really you know, how two are you to two and a half on this? times. You became the of a household that, right? name covering and the web Gulf pages War. can he go from edge to edge, but that's really difficult Operation to read for a lot of people. You know, it's, it's so edge. sad, so uh, Brianna, sure because that I, I did uh, that screen is cover him for so many years, and, and uh, I got to know him. I got to know him well. We spent a lot of time together to over these and years. Very the the you know, wars, but also non-wars, uh, because what he was doing after he left office was really so incredibly important. So that is uh, and I got to see that up close. Today. Uh, my earliest I hope you learned a lot remembrance was uh, in 1990, 91. I was seeing that Pentagon correspondent during...